Right, so vestibular disease in dogs is something that I've spoken about in another video and I'll link that in the description down below. But in this video, I want to introduce you to Dan. So he's a friend of mine. He runs the YouTube channel Parent Pacifier. And again, I'll link that down in the description. But from today's point of view, he had a dog or he has a dog who is an older dog who suffered from a sudden loss of balance, who started to stumble, who couldn't move and couldn't get up and who was ultimately diagnosed with idiopathic or old dog vestibular disease. And I really thought it would be really useful if you've got a dog going through this experience just to hear Dan's story, to find out what it can be from a first-hand account, from an owner's point of view, so you can hear you know, what the worry was, what the progression was, what the kind of treatment that, that Dan's dog buddy went through. Um, I hope you find it really useful, and for now, it's over to Dan. Hi, I'm Dan from the Parent Pacifier YouTube channel, and I want to thank Dr. Alex for having me on Our Pet's Health to talk to you about the story of my dog Buddy here and his bout with vestibular syndrome, also known as old dog syndrome or doggy vertigo. So on a Sunday morning in February 2018, my dog Bud was with my parents, and he started to fall down a little bit. And he's 13 years old, Cavalier Cocker Spaniel. He's had some knee problems. So we assumed that it was probably a knee issue. Our normal vet was closed, so we took him to another one that we've been to before. And they gave him a shot because he looked completely normal, of course, at that time. So then fast forward a couple hours in that day, and he started tripping again. He started falling down. His head was a little tilted. And uh, he was just having, a, didn't look like himself. He was having a hard time. Uh, and that night he had fallen asleep on the couch like he normally does and about an hour into his sleep He got up and jumped off the couch and fell down and could not get up You could tell he was really disoriented. He was looking all over the place when you called him He couldn't really tell where you were calling him from. That's what it seemed um, And his legs and paws were completely stiff um, And he I believe, urinated himself so it just seemed like he was it was uh, having some issues and we knew we needed to take him to the vet so we called the closest vet that was 24 hours, also another one that we don't normally use, and uh, we went there, and immediately the vet knew it was vertigo, right? It was uh, vestibular syndrome, and it made so much sense because he looked like he was seasick, right? He just was stiff with those paws, trying to hold on to anything that would keep him still, and his head was tilted, and actually you could see it with his eyes, the vet had showed where his eyes would jump up and then slowly come down, jump up and slowly come down. And that was happening throughout that time, and so we had to keep him overnight that night, and we would hear the next day how he's progressed. Well, that Monday, uh, around 2 p.m., we heard back that nothing has happened, he was actually still exactly the same. So we decided to keep him overnight another night. Uh, that Tuesday afternoon, again, no progress, still exactly the same laying down, not getting up. Um, and that's where the vet had said, well, you know, he's 13, he's he's lived a good life, um, but we'll have to, at some point, make a decision on what we're gonna do because it was getting really expensive to keep him overnight there. and We had to have him in an IV because he wasn't eating, so it was a, a, a difficult thing. So we were trying to think through what that family decision would be uh, coming up on that Wednesday. But around noon, I was doing some research because I really wasn't ready to give up and found an article or a blog that had talked about another person who had the same experience. They had a dog very similar to Buddy and around 13 years old and had vestibular syndrome and was in it for like four days. But on the fifth day, the dog got up. They were ready to go to a neurologist and all these things. Those are things that we just don't have the money for to take them to a neurologist to find out potentially what could it be causing this is anything from an earache all the way up to cancer on the brain. And at 13, what are we gonna do? Have surgery um, and spend all this money that he might not make it through. Um, if he was five, that'd be a different story. So we, um, I was looking at it and thinking maybe just one more night, right? One more night if we need to. I'm not ready to jump on that decision, uh, but we had to make it as a family. But at 2 p.m. we got the call from the vet that he actually stood up and uh, that was awesome. We really wanted to hear that. So we went to the vet that night to go see how he was and be able to you know, make our decision. And he was walking around and moving. His head was still tilted. He still looked a little you know, disoriented, but he was up and walking around, which was a huge difference from where he was Sunday night and throughout those 
uh, throughout the beginning of the week. Um, so we decided to take him home and he actually ate at home. He didn't want to eat at the vet. He refused to take anything even from our hands at the vet's office. But the second we were back home, he was eating. He ate actually some chicken right away, of course. And it took only a couple days and he was pretty much back to normal. And now he doesn't even look like he has had, uh, a, has had to deal with uh, that vestibular. Um, so we kept him on a vitamin and some medicine over that time. And uh, to, we, now we know what to look out for, to look out for the eyes jumping up and down. And, and if he starts to trip, that doesn't look like necessarily at one particular location, like a, one particular leg where he's just falling all over. We know exactly what to look for. So um, it was encouraging to, to read that others would do that. So I hope that this can encourage you if you're currently dealing with uh, vestibular syndrome in your dog or vertigo with your dog. Um, and if you have dealt with it, I'd love to have conversations with you in the comments below. Um, but that's, that's our story. And, and here he is today, uh, 13, almost 14 years old and, uh, normal and, uh, and everything. So yeah, it was, uh, it was, it was rough because it looked like it looked really bad, but, um, but ultimately he was able to come out of it and we're glad we didn't make any, uh, any other final decisions that week. So. Uh, but thank you for allowing me to share my story and I hope this can encourage somebody. Okay, so big thanks to Dan for sharing his story about Buddy with us today. You know, it's really valuable to hear first-hand accounts. Like I say in my dedicated video about vestibular disease, the progression and the severity and the symptoms can be different, but you know, Dan and Buddy give us a good indication of what to expect. In my experience, many dogs will actually improve at a faster rate than Buddy. They'll be only, you know, unwell or need to be hospitalized for a day or two. But, you know, in some cases it might even be longer. It might be seven to 10 days before we see a, a significant improvement. But if your dog's going through vestibular disease, if you've got any questions about that condition, then make sure you check out my other video that I'll link in the card here. And until next time, I'm Dr. Alex from Our Pets Health, because they're family.